Hi, this is Joe, and thanks for coming back for another video. I'm working on a setup for my camper, and I'm building a battery bank. And I have a standard battery box here, and I have some lithium iron phosphate batteries, and I can stack up to four of them. Uh, these batteries are 12 volt, 20 amp hour, so I have two of them, and they are wired in parallel. And so I have a 12 volt, 40 amp hour capacity on these batteries. Let's talk a little bit about lead acid batteries versus lithium ion, or, and in this particular case, lithium iron phosphate. Uh, lithium iron phosphate is a very safe battery. It has a nominal voltage of 3.2 volts per cell, so it's very similar in the voltage capacities of a lead acid battery. Uh, the nice thing are, are about the, li the lithium iron phosphate is they're very light. Lead acid batteries, regardless of what type, whether they're the gel, the AGM, or the wet cells, are very much underrated per the specifications by the manufacturer. So, for example, depth of discharge is one of the measurements of batteries, meaning you take the total watt hours of a battery and you then apply number of watts load to that battery over a period of time and you can only discharge a battery for a certain percentage before uh, if you go any farther than that capacity the battery can be ruined so for example if you take a lead acid battery regardless of whether it's a wet cell or AGM or gel uh, the standard depth of discharge percentage is 50%. If you go any farther than 50%, you run the risk of damaging the battery beyond repair. Uh, lithium iron phosphate can go as high as 90% depth of discharge. Uh, lithium ion batteries can go as high as 80% depth of discharge rate. So these batteries, either lithium or lithium iron phosphate, and the lithi lithium iron phosphate battery is a much safer battery. Uh, it does not explode, it does not catch fire. They're very, very safe. You may pay initially a little bit more money up front, but in the long run, the battery is going to last you much longer. It's going to be safer, much lighter. For example, if, and again, the lithium iron phosphate has a depth of discharge up to 90%. And if you go beyond that, your number of recharge cycles drops drastically. And in the case of lead acid batteries, again, we said that number of depth of discharge was 50%. You may only be able to get, let's say, at 50%, 500 recharge cycles on a lead acid battery. On a lithium iron phosphate battery, you can get 3,000 uh, recharge cycles on that battery. So in the long run, the lithium iron phosphate batteries are much cheaper and last much longer than the lead acid batteries. So you should really consider going with a lithium iron phosphate battery. I'll post some specifications that are listed on the batteries at the end of the video so you can uh, see what they are. But again, you should really consider switching your battery bank to a lithium iron phosphate. So what I have here is I can I have a capacity of up to four batteries. So that would be uh, 80 amp hours. And, but right now I'm just going to start out with the two batteries. I have uh, mostly just some 12 volt lights, interior lights in the camper. Plus I want to be able to run a few other very small 12 volt uh, devices. So starting out this should be fine for me. But I do have enough room for expansion. So what I've done here is I've put the batteries in here. I've In this case I've wired them up in parallel. Then on the top and I'll take this out to the camper and wire this in and show you. I have a capacity meter here. And this plugs in to a shunt that has been wired in line uh, with my power converter. So I can now go through and check out as uh, we're using 
the capacity of the batteries while we're camping and I can check again the consumption in uh, watt hours I can check how many watts uh, how many amps I'm pulling and what the battery voltages are so I can keep a close eye on uh, the various uh, capacities of the batteries uh, as I'm using them so I'll go out and show you how we're going to wire this in the camper but I just wanted to show you here I have a, a lead this lead goes directly to my power converter and then I'm going to wire in that I already have wired in the camper another set of leads that will go to the batteries and that will be for running a charger and I'm going to run the charger in my truck uh, plugged into the uh, directly into the battery and then I can charge the batteries while I'm driving and then again as I'm utilizing the capacity of the battery this will be plugged in to the shunt coming out of the power converter and then I can monitor all my capacities, voltages, watts and watt hours as I'm using the batteries. So let's head out to the camper and I'll show you how I'm going to uh, wire this in. We're inside the camper now and I have a little cupboard here that I'm going to use as my battery storage cupboard. I have a tie down for the battery mounted. I have a couple of leads here this is the the lead with an XT60 connector that will go to the connector that I showed you earlier on the battery. This runs down and ties in to my power converter. I have two leads here with uh, ring terminals on. This will go uh, to the batteries wired in parallel. Uh, this runs to the exterior of my camper and is wired directly into uh, some leads going that I've wired on the underside of my pickup truck to inside the cab and I can then run my battery charger uh, directly to the battery bank for charging. Eventually what I'll do is I'll uh, tie in some solar panels and then I can uh, charge the batteries directly from the solar panels but initially I'm just going to use a 12 volt charger. So there's the, the power converter lead, the two leads for the charging circuit. Let's go ahead and put the battery box in and we'll hitch it up and I'll show you uh, how everything is going to uh, function. We have the battery connected to the power converter and let's look at the capacity indicator here. We have, uh, and I haven't charged this battery yet, we're at 13.34 push the amp hour very small because I'm not drawing any amps other than what's going through the power converter so 0 0.008 and uh, I don't have the percentage I don't have anything set up yet I just plug this in so there's our voltage there's our current let's go ahead and turn on a few lights and see what kind of uh, current draw we have Notice we've now jumped up to 0.353. Let's pop on another light here. And now we're up to 0.672. These are uh, 600 milliamps. And as you can see, now we're getting uh, a reading on the battery because we actually have a current draw now. So the really nice thing is uh, when I, as we're using... Uh, the camper, I can open the door here and uh, I can instantly check what the capacity is of my battery and, and any current draw that I'm, I'm pulling. Let's go ahead and turn off the lights. And as you notice, now the current is going to drop back down to next to nothing here. Very small uh, current draw. And then uh, what I can do is uh, I can disconnect the battery when I'm not using it to the power converter and then that will shut off the display disconnect the battery and what I'm going to do now is go ahead and charge up the battery this is how I've wired in my uh, my coach batteries my capacity indicator so if you have any questions uh, please just drop me a comment and thanks for watching we'll see you next time